On the show today, activist and rap legend Chuck D is here to shed light on everything from the state of hip hop to the state of our nation. And Jurassic 5 will join Heidi Mae at the bomb shelter as they prepare to release their first album in three years. And I'll become a card carrying member of the NRA. It's going to be a great show. Don't move. Did you see the run of ads for the Hummer where the pretty lady with a smirk on her face drives alone in this monstrous 17-foot vehicle? Is she a soldier in Iraq fighting the war on terror? Is this the vehicle she needs to navigate her way through the twists and turns of her everyday life? Did you see the ad for the newer, smaller Hummer where the short guy walks into the boardroom where all the honchos are having a meeting about what to do about their useless, gas-draining, fucked-up urban assault vehicle and suggests they make it smaller? That's like smoking a shorter cigarette. When even the President of the United States now recognizes that America is addicted to oil, can't General Motors show some backbone, exercise some responsibility, and just stop making these vehicles and instead lead the way in creating means of transportation that are more in line with what's happening and where things are going? Isn't it time for the powers that be to show more responsibility and vision rather than just caving into stockholders and their portfolios? As taxpaying residents, we are held to a fairly high level of accountability. When the big guys make bad decisions, we're often left holding the bag. Big corporations make me feel small. Their almighty power makes me think my country is getting sold out by a bunch of paunchy, power-suited pussies. Every company has one basic goal, supply the demand. Maybe it's time to demand something else. So the next time you're driving your Hummer from your driveway to the shopping mall, think about what it takes to fill that gas tank up and push all those tons of steel down the street and who's really paying for it and wipe that smirk off your face. My guest today is public enemy number one, Chuck D, who recently released a new P.E. album, Rebirth of a Nation, and continues to tour the country, lecturing on everything from fractured government to free speech. Chuck, it's good to see you again, man. Hey, Henry. Hey, you know, it's like, welcome to first grade. Look at this. Oh, big yeah, chairs. sorry, okay. Well, <laughs> we got big chairs. Great. <laughs> um, the, the, the title of the album, uh, Rebirth of a Nation, this right. is no doubt in reference to the, the movie Birth of a Nation, the, the, the Ku Klux Klan classic. Right. It's a twofold effect. Um, uh, Paris, who's a, a fellow renowned rapper, uh, wanted to, you know, to get involved in producing a public enemy record. I said, Paris, if you could go one better, write all the lyrics and do all the music, and it's actually a play of the rebirth, uh, the birth of a nation movie, you know, on bringing some kind of sensibility what's surrounding us today, and then also it takes a nation of millions to hold us back right. was a public enemy album. Yeah. So maybe the the rebirth of a certain spirit introducing it to the, or reintroducing it to the music field. Right now, you do lectures all the time. Mm -hmm. You just put out a PE record. You just did this new one with Paris, and you got the Air America slot. And we're in an age right now where there's a lot that needs to be talked about, right. and you have a lot of ways to get your, your, you know, get your words out. Is there any overall message that you try and impart? Yeah, rap, race, Reality and technology are using my themes. And these are the things that are, you know, surrounding the MTV mind. And you don't, you know, want the minds to be empty. Like, they spell MTV, E-M-P-T-Y-V. And then with the Viacom-owned Booty and Thug Network, BET, actually lending into that, you know, we have to kind of like, in the realm of a society where corporations pretty much want to turn human beings into consumers, and then all of a sudden people think God is the, the maker of not all things, but things that have a price tag or a barcode to it. Uh, we have to kind of like work very hard to bring people down to the fact that the best things in life are really free 
and, and, and minds are the real estate of the millennium. So hold on to your mind in a time where people are actually not even selling their souls, but they're kind of like giving them away. Like, please, take my soul and take my mind. <laughs> and it's take my mind so you can take it and rehab it and pimp it out and sell it back to me. Uh, we, don't, we, we can't let that happen. I mean, I remember when the Public Enemy records came out, and I'm like, finally, you know, school's in, and right. it's about time. This, this, this should be a class. Nation of Millions is a history lesson for contemporary young Americans, 10th grade and up, let's go. Right. Do, you, is, do you find there's anybody in the rap world who's doing that? There's tons of artists doing it in the, in the world. Well, you, could, you could name Black Alicious and Dilated Peoples who, who just kind of like keep it straight, keep it real. You can go back to the people like, you know, our God brother, Ice-T, you know, who's still there, you know, and when he speaks, he, he, he's so clear and have a, has such a common sense about him. But I think the, the whole hyping of the stereotype of, of the mainstream of what makes rap really co uh, a commodity to, to sell it across yeah. counters easily obscures the facts of, of the amount of, of people doing fantastic jobs in the rap world that they call the underground circuit. The obscuring of, of rap music and hip hop getting across to the masses, to me, is the biggest blasphemy has been taking place ever in the music business because the art of performance is, is just dropped off incredibly so. You know, when you looked at an ice T, when you look at the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, when the funk bands, like, you know, would come out in the early 80s and Grandmaster Flash first came out, the bands hated to play with Grandmaster Flash and come on after because he had totally drained the building. Yeah. The Furious Five drained the fucking building. They could not do anything more because they screamed and they wasn't made to scream. They just screamed because they had to do this to this new phenomenon. Right. So, so with that in mind, you know, um, I think today's hip hop artists have to kind of like look at other situations to redevelop itself in performance. Because yeah. when somebody looks at Henry Rollins, they say, oh my God. And they have no other choice to be, but to be in awe because you're putting everything down as an artist. Blood, sweat, tears, logic, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you know, heat, entertaining. And I'm like, you know, I, I can't put it in the word. The only thing I can put in words is just Rollins band. Motherfuckers changed my life. And that has left the rap building. Yeah. At one point, I, I saw you, you once said, each one teach one. Uh -huh. And after the Katrina disaster, right. PE released a single, uh, I, I guess, addressing the lack of, of help going to that region. Right. Um, it's been six months now, and different. some parts of New Orleans are looking pretty good. Other parts, there's cars and trees and people looking for their mamas inside the bottoms of, of houses. So what's your take on what's going on there now? Uh, I made a ditty called, Hell No, We Ain't All Right which was kind of like the, uh, the reflection of looking at television and seeing what seemed to be a majority of black people that, that were kind of like trapped, were waiting for a government to like figure out, you know, how they could be helped out. Well, um, I'll tell you, the wild paradox about New Orleans is that we're living in a country that has a poor sense of not only world geography, but has a poor sense of domestic geography, where people are like, oh, wow, I didn't know so many black people lived in New Orleans. I just thought it was girls gone wild and boom, yo, titties, yeah. Mardi Gras. But the, the point I'm making is that when somebody says, well, I didn't know it was so many black people in New Orleans and black people were at, you know, at risk within that dangerous situation, you know, all you have to do is figure out, well, you know, Congo Square, which is the birthplace of blues and jazz, which triggers in all the music that we do today, you know, comes out of black people coming through the Gulf of Mexico from different places like the Caribbean and Africa as a port of slavery. Yeah. You remember a few months ago when Kanye West said, uh, he was on TV, he said, the president doesn't care about black people. And that's exactly what he said. See, yeah. you know, people, were, you know, they, they misconstrued that and say, oh, Kanye West says George Bush hates black people. Oh, Kanye West said George yeah, Bush, hates and doesn't you know, care. Yeah, 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 two, yeah, big, two yeah. different things. Yeah, and, and I, I was on stage every night during that, and I said, okay, I don't necessarily agree with Kanye West 
in that I don't think he, he, he doesn't care. I don't think he doesn't care about poor people. Right. In that he doesn't understand, like, what's a poor person? He's not around them. Right. He maybe shakes one hand on the way to the airplane and he's gone. Right. And after six months, when you see that America is not there for Americans, we seem to be there for Africa, for, we're, we're putting democracy in Iraq and all this wonderful stuff. Right. But we can't even make it down to Louisiana, it would seem. Yeah, when you talk about something domestically. Yeah, we yeah. should be on it, like, the next day. Now, that being said. A lot of passing the buck, though. Yeah, but, you know, it bugs me that Nagin says, come back to New Orleans, and people are saying, come back to what? Move back in. To what, that hole in the ground? With no, with no water, no power, no nothing. But, okay, you're an astute Bush critic. You're on air, America. You know, you're, you're, you're one of the monkey wrenches in the great machine screwing it up. Are there people that you look to or people you think in this country, you know, that are doing that, addressing the problem, coming up with a solution, and think, moving with it? I think there's a, there's a whole bunch of people. Um, you know, in broadcasting, Tavis Smiley had a State of a Union address that was quite poignant. You know, um, the Millions More movement in D.C. was out of the idea of don't wait for government. You know, as a community, you've got to step up yourself. Like... You know, Dick, Gregory, Jim Brown, people like that. But um, futuristic ideas come from people that don't, don't necessarily have celebrity or marketing plan behind them. It could come from email that myself and yourself gets. You know, it can come from all shapes and sizes of society. And I think that the future of the world includes more voices to be acknowledged. So maybe we all got to do a better job of handling the voices that need to be heard. So maybe that's the future of the world. It has to be. Make make the few the many, right? Right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming down here. My hero. My hero. Rollins. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. Coming up a bit later on the show, Heidi May brings us an exclusive performance by Jurassic Five. But first, a celebration of the First Amendment with IFC's Soapbox. My name is Mark Kulkas. I'm the president of Kick-Ass Pictures. Uh, we make porno movies. My name is Kimberly Kane. I'm an adult film actress. I was an advisor and on the Commission for Obscenity and Pornography. I am an ex-adult film star. I'm Leo Severino, very about Catholic, and I teach uh, as a hobby theology. I am a sex therapist. I am one of the people that run a ministry called Chase C.S. Girls. Porn is a multi-billion dollar business. Uh, it's been said it's bigger than mainstream Hollywood. Girls can contact us, and if they're a stripper or a porn star, we find a church for them to go to where they will not feel judged. What serial killers have said is that their most enjoyable reading and viewing is porn. I think porn in general is a good thing. It's beautiful. Women are beautiful, men are beautiful, and seeing it on film is amazing. John Paul II, I think, said it best, speaking about pornography, um, by saying that it isn't that pornography shows too much, it's that it shows too little. It shows simply the bodies uh, in motion, and it doesn't show the soul. If you do work in porn, there has not been anything you have ever done that God would not forgive you for. Living a holy life replaces the desire for pornography. I I'm a living example of that. We are capable and very much in control of our own bodies. We make our own decisions, and uh, we live with the consequences. Porn really doesn't lead to anything other than other than an orgasm. There are over 36,000 passages in the Bible, and there is absolutely no reference in there whatsoever to pornography or to masturbation. If you want to do some one-handed surfing, go ahead, because it's OK with God. If the government's telling us what we can watch in the privacy of our own home, uh, there's something wrong with the government. I would like to see the obscenity laws enforced. You've got to contact, as a citizen, the Justice Department of the United States and basically demand that it's done. You, you take away our freedom to make our own choices when you start to regulate things too much, you know? Um, I think it's a matter of finding the balance. Now that the furor over Harry Whittington getting in the way of Vice President Cheney's shotgun blast has finally died down, I've been listening to a lot of what the NRA said about the matter, and I have to admit, I've been very wrong about gun control. Hunting with guns saves hunters' lives. 
We don't need guns to hunt and kill pheasant or moose or Bengal tigers, but it makes things a hell of a lot easier for the outdoorsman and blood sport enthusiast. If you're out in the forest, you can stay a fairly safe distance from a wild, unpredictable animal when you're trying to kill it with a 12-gauge shotgun. But you can stay an even safer distance from the untamed beasts if you're shooting an M60 semi-automatic machine gun with an infrared telescopic sight tripod mountain silencer. Imagine how many people would be maimed by deer every hunting season if we were forced to use spears or bayonets like they do in less sophisticated third world countries. People were literally boring me to death telling me about that Whittington guy's injuries were bad enough to cause a heart attack, but nobody's talking about the fact that if he didn't get shot in the first place, he wouldn't have been in the hospital when he had the heart attack. And if you think about it, guns are actually safety equipment. Cars are way more deadly, and you don't even need a license to own one of those. People talk about banning guns, but if we ban them, criminals are just going to move to knives, and we're going to see an increase in stabbings. I've also heard people talking about just banning cheap firearm, but if we get rid of the cheap guns, we're going to put them out of the reach of the poor people who want to protect their family. And we all know that a lot of poor people are minorities. So if we ban cheap guns, we're just being racist by keeping minorities in danger. Heck, I don't know about you, but I'm no racist. I'm a safety advocate. And I finally realized that the NRA speaks the truth for all of us. And now here's Heidi May with this week's musical performance from Jurassic 5. Thanks, Henry. It didn't take long for this LA-based outfit to emerge as hip-hop pioneers, showcasing an ingenuity that demands respect from both peers and fans alike. With powerful vocal harmonies and amplified funk beats, their sound mixes modern-day reflection with old-school spirit. Performing the song Freedom off their sophomore album Power in Numbers, this is Jurassic 5 Uncut. Yes, yeah. yeah. We about to do this. Yeah. This song is called Freedom. Oh, yeah. And I like to say, first, free all our political prisoners out there. Yeah, yeah. Jamil yeah. Alameen. Rest in peace, Tookie Williams. Uh. Yo. And motherfuck like George yeah. Bush. You gotta hold on to this feeling. And what we want, y'all. Freedom. Uh. And what we need. Freedom. Yeah. Show them travel by the multitude. The devil's gavel has a couple food. My culture's screwed, cause this word is misconstrued. My country's exempt from food, cause leaders have different views. You choose. What mean the world to me is being free. Being free. Live and let live and just let it be. Let it be. Ah, uh, love, peace, and unity. One universal family. One God, one aim, and one destiny. Oh, yeah. Uh. Imagine life without a choice at all. Uh -huh. Giving a vote without a voice at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. They be the problems that we face. I'm talking poverty and race, but no matter what the case, you we gotta hold on to this feeling. And what we want, y'all, freedom. And what we need, freedom. Uh, we gotta say it like we mean it. Yeah. Hold on to this feeling. And what we want, y'all, freedom. And what we need, freedom. Check this out, yeah. You know what? You know what? I'm the first candidate to hate. I had a beat on my drum to communicate. To comment for those who were hung, they would decapitate the tongue if you would mention the word freedom. freedom. Got people screaming, free will be at your mall. But two out of three of y'all will probably be at the mall. Huh? I'm heated with y'all, the defeated will fall, incomplete and unsolved when the words freedom's involved. Yo. My forefathers hung in trees to be free. Rest in peace. Got rid of slavery, but still kept the penitentiary. And now freedom got a shotgun and shells with your name. Release the freedom uh -uh. and let and freedom I'm hang. Vote prisoner, uh -huh. Hollywood visitor. Uh -huh. Dance for cats, we segregated on. Wax, my color got me handy. Cap, Amos, and Andy for uh. the freedom. They just won't hit me. Hold on to this feeling. And what we want, y'all? Freedom. And what we need? Freedom. One more time around the world. You got to hold on to this feeling. And what we want, y'all? Freedom. And what we need? Come on, freedom. Seven, tell them what they need to do. Hold on. Cause it's not a lot of 
of time. Joe. Your heart, body, soul, and your mind. Yes. It's so true and ain't been hurting so long. Feeling. That's the reason why we named this song. Freedom. Cause it's not a lot of time. Joe. Your heart, body, soul, and your mind. Yes. It's so true and ain't been hurting so long. Feeling. That's the reason why we named this song. Freedom. Henry Rollins, baby. This week's end credits go to Bill Monroe and Eddie Van Halen. Bill Monroe is considered the founding father of bluegrass, which was named for his band, the Bluegrass Boys, perfecting a style of music in the 1940s that was loyal to country string roots. Monroe cranked up the pace with aggressive plucking that was far more complex than his guitar playing contemporaries. He would go on to tour relentlessly for five decades. In the late 1970s, Eddie Van Halen completely revolutionized electric guitar technique with his two-handed finger tapping. To keep his patented style under wraps before the release of Van Halen's first album, Eddie actually turned his back to the prying eyes of concert audiences. But the secret didn't last long as pimple-faced music freaks spent hours in suburban basements trying to replicate the sonic fury of eruption and you really got me. If you feel like digesting a cocktail of these two high-velocity guitar styles, then Strummin' with the Devil, a bluegrass tribute to Van Halen being released this month, is yours for the taking. Frankly, I'll stick with the originals. Thank you again to my guests Chuck D and Jurassic 5. Join us next week when our guests will be the legendary filmmaker Werner Herzog and musical guest Frank Black. See you next time.